Okay, and here we are. Starbase Texas Hold'em Poker. So, first of all, we've got privacy booths. So these privacy booths ensure that uh, as long as everyone is sitting in their chair, there is no way to see other play players' cards because your cards are up here on the top of your view there. They are impossible to view as long as everybody is sitting in their chairs. So, obviously you don't want people getting out of their chairs during the game, but that's the way it works. And uh, now, so we've got a bank control system, so all players have bank balances. So, we, as you can see here, we've got player one, he's got a bank balance of 1,000, player two, he's also got a bank balance of 1,000, we can give him an extra 1,000, so player two now has 2,000, so you can charge people up with cash. Uh, now, inside of here, what you've got is your cards up here, and then over here you've got deal me into the game button, so you're in or out of the game. This is your bank balance, this is your betting amount and the slider to control it, this is raise, call, and fold. And so let's start a game here. We got player one deal in. Let's deal in, I don't know, three players to start so that we don't make too big of a game. Let's try to get through this pretty quick here and uh, let's start the game. So the first thing it's going to do is initialize and, you know, create the deck and everything. There's a 52 card deck. It's absolutely ridiculous trying to deal with all these variables and stuff. So it takes a moment to start up. Now, small blind, big blind. If you're not familiar with poker, you might want to read up on the rules of it if you're interested in playing. But it starts off forcing a couple people to bet in, and who is forced will rotate around the table. So everybody takes a turn being forced in. Um, this is the player with the small blind is called the person with the button, and that will move around. And for the first round, it's going to be this person who bets first, the person after the big blind, and then after that, it will always be the person, in the, the, the second person after the first person after the button. So it's going to be him betting first on the first round. And him bidding for in this player three will bet first on the first round and player two will bet first on every round after that and then the next game everything will move one to the right okay so it says it's already ready for him to play because he's the first better in, in this round so let's go and check him out so here's player three so as you can see the dealer hasn't dealt any cards yet and i have got a king of hearts and a ten of spades so uh, that's a pretty good hand so let's start by i don't know calling i guess We'll just call into the game. We'll, we'll start by just calling around. So right now the highest bet on the table was 100 before. So if everyone calls on 100, we're going to go over to the next one. Let's see what he's got. He's got a five and a four different suits. Not a very good hand. But not so bad now. we got a six. We're not that far off from the straight. So all the money from the initial round was moved into the pot over here. So there's a 300 in the pot. There's a pair of sixes on the table. The game starts getting interesting. So it's player two turns to bet. Now he's looking, he has got a third six. He is so happy. Um, you might want to talk about bluffing, not bluffing at this point, but like, I'm gonna go with a more instinctual thing, not trying to bluff. He might try to like, hold off now and later raise his bet or whatever, but I mean, let's start by raising. I mean, he's got, I'm gonna go right off the, the raw value of his hand. He's got a good hand, he should raise. Um, now this guy's got king and 10, he's got a pair of 10s, he might think he's got a great hand, so he might go, you know what, I'm gonna raise you again going to raise up the value of the pot even higher so he pulled it up to 32 he pulls it up even higher up to 79 now this guy he's still holding nothing he's going to say you know what i'll call and let's just call on everyone now so uh call and call and once everybody has the same amount of money in the pot that round of betting is over and it moves into the <clears throat> into the group pot now it's back to him to bet first so another thing in this game is checking you can also call on zero in this game, basically. Calling on zero is called checking, so if everybody calls, it just means we move on to the next card. Nobody was confident enough. Technically, some of these players have good enough hands that they probably shouldn't be doing this. But, I mean, whatever, they checked. So now that round of betting is over, no extra money gets put into the pot, and we deal another card. Now the dealer's up to five cards on the table. The game is basically over. It's the final round of betting. It's this guy's turn. He's looking. He's got a queen to six. He's got three of a kind. He's got a queen on the table. He's got a full house. This guy is golden right now. So he's going to, like, I don't know, go in hard. Like, just raise way out there. Now, so he's put in a ton of money. And now if this guy even wants to call, he's got to match that. He's got a king and a ten. He's got a pair of tens. There's, I mean, honestly, if this guy went in this hard at this late in the game, and the, this guy would think he's got no chance, he'd probably be guessing the guy's got a pair of queens or something. But you know what? Let's say, let's say he feels confident enough to call, but not confident enough to raise. And now this guy, let's say he's just scared out of his mind. He's going to fold out. He doesn't want to put any more money into this black hole. 
and now this guy here he is so overconfident he says I'm not oh he can't sorry he can't keep raising because the the pot was already all active players had the same amount otherwise he, if the previous player had raised he could have raised again but he can't raise now um, so that's over and it is now calculating hands this is a ridiculously complicated thing to do but it uh, I, I mean it, it like you've got two cards in your pocket here and you then there's seven shared five shared cards so each player has seven cards and they're not the same seven cards for every player and you have to make the best five card hand out of that ridiculously complex like absolutely insane to do in YOLO in regular programming you just use some arrays and some loops and solve it with like a bit of brute force but I mean in YOLO this was a nightmare of a headache so uh, there we go we've now got uh, a game a round played and the money has now also been transferred this guy has won the pot so he now has more money in his pot he doesn't have an extra 857 because some of that money was his to start every time you Every time a, a betting round ends, the money is moved from your bank into the, the central pot. And he's lost money, and he has lost money as well. He was the biggest loser here because he went in harder and lost. Okay, and so that's how the, the game works. I mean, it is full standard Texas Hold'em poker rules. Um, now, the next thing, I mean, if, if you want to see the game run like a little more fully, we can go over here to the dev table. This is the dev section where I'm developing it. As you can see, the amount of cards is uh, the YOLO chips is absolutely ridiculous. Like there's this whole system over here that's uh, completely full except for one slot in each one, and then there's a couple racks over here that are real. That this one is completely full and this one was filling up. And then there's the ones I pull out of the racks to work on them while I'm working on them. Now I've got to try to stuff all this stuff into the table. It should fit. I might have to expand the table a little, but it, it should fit in there. Um, so anyways, let's run a quick game here with, I don't know, maybe all five players really, really fast. So we'll, we'll deal it. Oh, wait, those guys were already dealt in. Let's add in the, the other two players. Let's start the game. And at first it's going to clear off the table. And it's going to start the game again. And it's initializing again. And, you know, it, it's going on. And now, as you can see, the button has moved one to the right, small, big. Um, so here we go. And 50, 100 and deal out the cards, you know, one at a time. Dealing is a bit of a slow process too. I mean, managing an array of data, this requires a 52 element array. And I don't use strings, I use a bunch of like, you know, numeric pseudo array systems. It, it, it's absolutely ridiculous what, you, what I had to do and how much time I had to invest just to draw the cards. I thought that was, the worst part was over when I got through it, but I was wrong. The worst part is evaluating the value of the hands which I'm still doing a little bit of touch-up work on, but it seems to be working virtually bug-free. I recently had a hand that I dealt that, that didn't seem right, uh, but um, I'll be checking into that. So anyways, uh, so let's just do calls for everybody here. Just go around the table, call, call, call. It resets your, very, your, your buttons before it takes input, so you can't accidentally leave a button on or anything. And uh, go around the table, everybody's called, 100 in the pot. Here we go. And the, the blind amounts can be adjusted, of course. Uh, I have them over here, the values to adjust blind and betting. So like the amount, the, the, the uh, range of your sliders for betting and the range of the, and the values of the small and big blind, of course, fully adjustable. You wouldn't want those to be fixed in values. Um, one thing I do want to add to it is I want to make it so that after the game, uh, these sections here, the, the parts that show your numbers, will all will, will, will transfer the money, will, will first show you what hand you had. Because I've already had a few times where I couldn't figure out why this guy won, and then it's like I didn't notice that he had a flush. That's why he won the game. It was I was baffled. I was like, this guy, why did he win? I thought he only had like a pair, but I didn't notice the suits were all the same. So, I mean, that's one of the problems that comes when you're managing five hands at once and trying to test the system. You're not paying attention to details. Uh, if you're playing as a single player in this game, you have a lot more time to like think stuff through and you don't start getting confused. I've already recorded a few videos of this, and I just find it super hard to actually mimic a game of multiple players because I can't keep straight which player has what sometimes. Even when I'm looking at the cards, I'm thinking about the last player's hand. <laughs> so, uh, anyways, uh, like I mean, in this one here, let's see what we've got. We've got queen, two, ten, four, five. 
Uh, I mean, I don't have time to, to think about every, everybody's hands, what, what they've got right now. I could also then try to write a program that would show you as your hand is developing what your best hands are or what hands you might hope for, but th th it's getting ridiculous. This is not a full computer. This is YOLO chips. So anyways, it's done. Everyone's in. It's now calculating hands. You can see this guy's result has come up. Now this guy's, then everyone else's. Each player takes a different amount of time to calculate their, uh, their, their hand. And now we've got the results and we've got a winner. And what did he have? This guy had a five and a queen. So he had a pair of queens, right? Is that what he had? And nobody else had better than that. This guy had a pair of twos. This guy had a pair of twos. This guy had nothing, right? Let me have a quick look here. Yeah, this guy had a pair of queen. Wait. He had a pair of queens and a pair of fives. He had two pair. That's why he won. Again, it's it's really hard. Like if you're looking only at one hand and this, it's easy to keep track of this stuff. But when you're looking at five hands trying to make snap decisions, you get really confused. So that's how it works, and uh, it is a, a beautiful complex system that can be used for like running a poker tournament, or you know, making a, uh, having people give you ca give you credits in game. They play the game and then they can cash out with you. Uh, it, it could be used for a lot of stuff. It's it, it's really really fun. And so that's it. That's the full-blown uh, YOLO Texas Hold'em poker. I've got a little polish work to do, and then she is good to go. I am very happy to have this nightmare over with, because I thought I was walking into a 20-30 hour project, and it turned out to be over, well over 100, probably close to 150 hours. I doubt 200, but at least 150 hours of work on this bloody thing. And next I'll probably move on to some arcade games or something, because after doing Blackjack and now Texas Open Poker, I'm a little sick of card games. So I think I'll try to do some kind of shooting game or asteroid game or something next and see what I can do with arcade games. I really love this YOLO programming challenge. I, I work with microcontrollers in my day job, so I'm always programming, you know, chips dedicated to functions and trying to arrange arrays of chips. It, it's quite different, but... The approach is not that far off from YOLO. I find YOLO a lot more like programming microcontrollers than like programming computers. The the mindset you have to have is, is quite similar. So nobody had a flush. There was three clubs. Nope, nobody had a flush. Anyways, uh, that is that. Uh, stuffing it all into the table is going to be a bit of a space puzzle, but I think I can just maybe make the table a little bigger if I have to. Challenge complete. Texas Hold'em Poker. Next up... Not sure.